Hey losers, I'm Coral. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here because it's February and it's Black History Month and I have a stack of books by black authors that I would like to share with you. These are books that I really loved and I think you'd love them too if you pick them up. A little reminder that you can really add some new terrors to your life, some horrible enrichment if you, uh, you know, make sure that you're spicing things up now and then, often. So first here we have The Between by Tanana Reeve Dew. Um, she is quickly becoming one of my favorite authors. The more I read, the more I love her books. This was published in 1995 and I want to say this might be her debut. I could be wrong. Anyway, it's not really important. I don't know why my brain is like, you have to find out immediately if this is her debut. But this is about a man named Hilton and he has suffered from these very vivid nightmares for a long period of his life. They started after he had this near death experience where he nearly drowned. His grandmother swam out to save him and she was able to save him, but then herself, she herself drowned. So he's lived with this guilt of, um, you know, causing her death, you know, causing her death. He didn't really cause her death, but the guilt with feeling like he caused her death. That was his caretaker, so now he has no caretaker and like what happens to him after this? So now as an adult, he has kind of dealt with those through therapy and things like that. But now for some reason, these nightmares ha are coming back and they're getting worse. And uh, more alarmingly, he's having a hard time figuring out like there are things that are happening and they're happening, but then it's like they didn't happen. And he's starting to realize that some of the things he thinks he's he's dreaming and they aren't really things that are happening in real life. So it's like this veil between reality and dreams are becoming thinner and thinner for him. And um, this was, oh my gosh, this book was so good. Oh, I just, I, I'm getting, my body is getting all like, tingly and goosebumpy even thinking about it because I had this like really visceral reaction to something I read near the end of this where my whole body got goosebumps and I was like, oh my God, I just, um, it was such an incredible book. And I'm after I'm done with this, I'm gonna have to look up and see if this was a debut because really just such a stunning piece of work especially if it's a debut, but nonetheless, it's such a great book. And Tanana Reeve, Tanana Reeve too, whether you pick up The Between or any of her other books, she's got quite a few of them. She is really such a masterful storyteller. And I think you won't be let down no matter what you choose, but The Between holds a special place in my heart. It's the first one that I read at first and it was so, so good. Next on my list is The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. This one is not supposed to be a horror book, but it definitely deals with some of the real life terrors that, um, especially in the Jim Crow era that black folks faced, especially young black men. Um, and in this case, we're following this young boy named Elwood who is a teenager and he is sent to a reformatory and oh boy like we just we all just read the reformatory by Tanana Reeve do and let me tell you this one is just as good uh the ending especially I remember reading the ending and being like what I had no idea um so we're following Elwood and he really he is more of like an optimist he is trying to get through this like this time in like this evil bad place with like his head held up high and you know he's quoting dr king and kind of trying to be like the bigger person and letting his like love help him through this time and he has this friend in this place um named turner who's kind of um, his approach to spending his time in the reformatory isn't quite the same. And, you know, as you go through the story, you kind of see like, who, who's gonna make it through their time in the reformatory? And it's a terribly sad book, um, heartbreaking. And the ending had my mouth hanging open and it's just like, oh, it's, it's like not a feel good book at all. But 
um, an import a very important story, especially considering that this is part of like American history that we don't talk about. Like if I, you know, m my 10 year old, she knows about some parts about like the civil rights movement and the Jim Crow era, but probably not about stuff like this, which, you know, of course you have to temper it down for a 10 year old, but it's like, do black 10 year olds who got sent to fucking reformatories like this, like, did we sugarcoat it? You know, did we make it age appropriate for them? Like, no. So I don't know. It's, it's such a, I don't know, such a really terrible time in our history. And it's like, we, has it gotten much better? Like, no, look at our fucking prison system. And <sighs> I don't know. That's not what this video is supposed to be about. Anyway, next on my list, this was published in 2023. This is Lone Woman by Victor Laval, and this was such a great book. I had a really nice time. I had a really great time reading this book. This is about Adelaide, and she is an adult woman who lives with her parents. At the very beginning of the book, she is like um, putting her parents' dead bodies in their bedroom of the house that they share and setting the place on fire before she gets on her coach and like skedaddles, right? She pitter patters right on out of there. And um, she's hoping to homestead. She's hoping to prove up a claim. And with her, she brings this heavy, heavy, heavy trunk full of heavy, heavy family secrets. And anybody who dares open the trunk, um, it'll probably be the last thing that they do, but you really don't know like what's in there for uh, quite a bit of the book. And once you do, you're like, what is happening here? And it's just like a really, this has such a really satisfying conclusion. And it's like a really nice book where it's, it's like there's horror in it. But in the end, it's like Adelaide like makes a family of her own and like a found family of friends and it's just kind of heartwarming, which I don't always, like I kind of like my horror more bleak, but the end of this was just like really fucking nice and it it felt really hopeful. It was like a hopeful horror story that I really loved. And I, I've i talked about this a lot, pro mostly because I'm really proud of myself for doing this. And it was a lot of work and I spent a lot of time doing this and I learned a lot, right? But I wrote this paper on women and westward expansion during the late 1800s. Uh, so this was when the Homesteading Act uh, came to be because they're like, the United States is like, hey, we need people taking up this land, this unclaimed land, right? I'm just like, well, you know, anyway. So uh, <laughs> it was a great opportunity for women because this was like one of the only opportunities ever presented um, in the history of the United States where a woman could own her own piece of land. So um, I wrote a paper about it uh, for my school and it got published in my paper, in my school's paper. And this is like, you know, this, this book takes place and it has, you know, a similar subject with women homesteaders and some of the sources we used are the same. So I thought that was really interesting. Maybe that's why I liked it so much, but it was a really great book. The next book on my list is The Other Black Girl by Zakia Delilah Harris. This is a thriller that came out in 2021 and I really enjoyed this. This is about a woman named Nella who works in the publishing industry. So it's like, uh, in, in and of itself, like that's already like dinging my bells. And she is the only black woman who works there, right? So she's just, she's already got to deal with the, you know, the shit of being like the only minority in this space. So she's like excited and maybe feels a little bit of relief when they hire another black woman named Hazel um, in their office. But things like don't quite go as smoothly as Nella wanted them to and she can't quite get a read on Hazel right away and it's just like not they aren't just like being friends right away like 
Nella kind of imagined it to be. You know, not that she was like, oh, we're gonna be besties immediately, but you know, she imagined being able to have a conversation and Hazel's just not that kind of person, I guess. But then Nella starts finding these like weird notes telling her to like, like leave this company right now. And things start to get a little bit sinister and she is, she, doesn't want to think that it could be Hazel, but she's like, who else would it be? And so it's like this um, thriller, kind of like a little corporate-y and um, I don't know, it, it gets it gets deeper than that, of course, and it takes you in some strange places. And I really liked this. I liked Nella a lot. She was uh, a fun main character to hang out with. The next book on my list is Lakewood by Megan Giddings. This came out in 2020 and this, I listened to this on an audiobook as, as an audiobook for my library and I liked it so much I bought a copy because it was so good. This is such a really strange dreamy feeling book but this is about, um, this is about Lena and her grandmother, her grandmother dies and I, I believe Lena's mother has some sort of illness where she's not, she's not really able to take care of herself. I want to say it is something that affects like her memory and stuff like that. So she's not always, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't, I don't know. I feel like it might be something dementia-like. I don't know. It's been, I just keep saying, I don't know, but, um, so she can't really rely on her mother to take care of things, right? So she is now the breadwinner of her family, taking care of her mother. She's like in her early 20s. So this is worrisome. Somehow she gets this like, I don't, I don't know, invitation isn't the word, but she gets kind of invited to apply for this job. But it's like a job that entails being tested on <laughs> like research testing and the the amount of money is like something she can't turn down because after her grandma died she discovered that she has like her family has like this great amount of debt and she does not know how she's going to pay for it so it's like not only does like not only is she going to be able to pay down this debt but also her mother is going to get the medical care that she needs. So Lena's like, oh, I have to do this. And then from there, things get really strange and you're not always able to tell like what is actually reality and what is the effects of this medical testing, these strange, strange things that are going on. Um, I really liked this. It is like a fever dream. It is like a fever dream. Um, very strange, but really excellent. And then last but not least, we have Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. This was published in 2021. And I've talked about all the Sinners Bleed a lot lately, so I figured I should switch it up. This is about um, two fathers. One's black, one is white. And they come from two very different, uh, you know, walks of life. But they decide to team up and work together after their sons who were partners are gunned down in public and murdered. So they're trying to find out like who would have done this and why, because you know, by all accounts, their sons were like really nice, good people. Uh, and it turns out their fathers are not really good, nice people all the time. Um, they might have certain backgrounds that um, would aid them in tracking people down and things like that. So it's like an unlikely buddy cop duo um, who normally probably would never get together for any type of situation, uh, but they learn a lot about each other and themselves and their sons in the process because, uh, you know, their sons were gay and that's not always accepted by everybody you know, no matter what we think about it as readers. Um, so this is like super heartfelt and like, oh, sad. It like, it made me cry a little bit. And um, so this is like super emotional and so excellent and uh, really just like one of the best crime, crime fiction books I've ever read in my whole fucking life. And like S.A. Cosby is just like 
really at the top, the top. He is an apex predator when it comes to crime fiction. Like he's at the top of the food chain, so excellent. And um, oh, I just, I really, I think, I don't know how many books he has. I know for sure there's like one that I haven't read. There could be more out there that I haven't, but I know for sure there's one. And I, I just need to get my hands on it because his books are so good. His books are so, it's simply too good. And um, yeah, Razor Blade Tears, emotional, heartfelt. He pours so much emotion into these books. How does he do it? I don't know, but this is excellent and I can't recommend enough. All these books on this list, so good. Highly recommend. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to know if you've read any of these, what you thought about them. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much. I will see you later. Goodbye.